Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today we're going to be continuing the Unity Editor Fundamentals. We're going to be focusing on tags and layers. How do we access them through scripts? How can we actually use them in our scenes? So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today for the session, which is to deal with layers and also tags. So if you look at the editor, every game object has what's called a tag. And a tag is a way to basically identify an object. So you can tag, for instance, this object to be editor only. You can tag this object to be the main camera, this object to be the player. And you can also click on add tag to add new tag. So if I wanted to say, maybe I need a new tag and I need that tag to be an enemy. So I can go here and say, okay, this is the enemy tag. I can hit save. And if I go back to, for instance, if I create a new game object here, we call it empty. And this is the enemy game object. Right now it's just an empty game object. I can go here and also select the enemy and basically tag it to that. Let's go ahead and do something more fun. Let's do, let's go ahead and clone this cube. And then this cube, for instance, could be our enemy. We can basically just call it cube enemy. And then we're going to change the material color of that. We'll just create a new material, go into materials. We'll just call it enemy. And then I'll just drag it and drop it under that. And we'll change the, we'll make this enemy maybe green. Okay, so here's our enemy. And then maybe this other cube is our, our player. So we can drag in, basically put them next to each other. We can just rename this to enemy. So we have a player and we also have an enemy. So if I wanted to tag the player with the player tag, I could go in and go ahead and select the player. I could do the same thing for the enemy, just tag it with enemy. So now what can I do with tags? What are Why are they helpful? So with tags, you can basically use them for a lot of different things. I could create another, another object in here. We can call this one the the manager we can probably call it the game manager for instance game manager and then our game manager is going to also have another script and this one's going to be called the tag tag manager and then instead of the tag manager we can say we can double click it to open it so a couple of things that we can do with tags we could say something like you know i could say game object that fine objects with tag or I could say multiple objects with tags to say that I wanted to find just because I know there's only one object with with one specific tag I can say okay I want to I want to find an object with a specific tag I could say okay I want to find the player the player game object so this is going to be game object and then this is going to be player game object so what if I wanted to find the enemy so I could duplicate that and I can say enemy and I can say enemy game object. So now what I can do here is so that we can see what's happening. Let me just indent this and rename it. So now we can say, okay, I'm going to say debug.log. And I want to make sure that my player game object is indeed what I'm looking for. So I could say, okay, game object. And we can say, okay, this is, we can actually just print in, print the name. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the enemy. And let's just rename that variable. Excellent, so now let's go ahead and go back into Unity. So when the game manager, when the star button executes, the play button executes, the star method is gonna get executed and therefore the tag manager will get executed. So when this happens, we're gonna say, okay, I want to find, out of all the game objects in the scene, I want to find the one that has the player tag. I also want to find the one that has the enemy tag. And then what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to store them in a variable. On this one, I'll store it in the player game object variable. And this one, I'll store it in the enemy game object variable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use debug.log to print out their names, just to make sure that I did get them. So now if I go and hit play, let's see if that worked. And we're getting a lot of different things because I have a lot of scripts on some of these other some of these other ones. So let's go ahead and this is what I'm gonna do. Let's go ahead and disable these other game objects, except we want the player and the enemy. 
and I believe I don't need the light disable and okay so we should be good to go the reason why I did that is because I don't want to print out everything else I want to I want to focus on those two areas so now if I hit play you can see that I'm getting oh, I'm also getting the collider because these objects have the cube rotator and they also let's see if we can disable those as well so let's go ahead and disable the cube rotator so what I'm gonna do instead is I want to I want you to keep keep these sessions so that you you know if you're watching the previous videos you don't lose track of what we've been doing so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to let's go ahead and do this let's create a let's duplicate this scene so this one is the scripting scene so I'm gonna duplicate it and this one is gonna be called tags and layers that's what we're gonna be discussing so then we are still in the scripting scene so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete what we did and this one was called just a cube we're just gonna move it up just to where it was and right there okay so we should be good as far as like how the scene used to look like indeed if I hit play everything should still remain the same and everything remains the same so now let's go into our new scene by double clicking on the tax and layer scene so what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm going to remove things that I don't need let's see the ceiling we don't need the ceiling and let's see on the player on this I don't need the Q rotator I also don't need the rigid body because I don't want it to fall fall down and we can leave the box collider that's fine so I'm gonna do the same thing on this other one on the enemy remove those two so and then on the ground I think we should be good on the ground because I don't have anything else okay so now we should be we should be clean so now I'm just gonna clear the log and I'm gonna hit play so now you can see I did get the player game object and I also got the enemy game object so that's that's really helpful when it comes to you know trying to identify game object and find game objects in the scene so one thing that you can do here you have access to everything on the player so I could say okay player game object and if you wanted to get maybe you wanted to get the layer that that had so let's do that let's go ahead and, and get a layer so if I do if I do that I could say okay debug that log player game object that layer Okay, what we can do here is we can say this one is the game object itself so this one is going to be the game object itself and now on this one right here what I'm going to say is player game object layer because that's what we're getting from this by calling player game object that layer and then the other thing that I'm going to do is on this one I'm going to say the enemy game object which is going to be this one in this case let's go ahead and reorganize this so uh, it, they are in align with what we're doing so player area goes here and then the enemy goes here excellent and then this one just need to rename that variable okay so we're going to get the player by attack then we're going to display the player layer then we're going to display the player game object name then we're going to get the enemy by attack and then we're going to get the enemy game object name and then we're going to get that enemy layer so let's see what happens when we execute this so if i hit play so we should see that the player game object has a layer of zero and then the enemy game object also has a layer of zero so how can we change the layers so now if i go to layers you can see that the default layer is set to default and the same thing with the enemy they're set to default so these are zero index so that's why you're seeing the you know a zero on the value right over here so if you wanted to get the name we can do that as well we can say so we can say on this one we can say layer number on this one we can say layer number as well and let's put this in order so we're just going to print the game object name first and then the layer so now if we wanted to get the name we can do layer we can call this function called layer mask and if we go if i type it correctly layer mask and we have two options we can say okay layer to name so if i wanted to get the name of that layer i could do layer mask that layer to name and then passing the layer layer layer, name, layer property 
Then the same thing here, I can do exactly the same thing. So what if we wanted to see both, so which is what I intended to do first. So I'm just going to say the number here, this is going to be the name, this one is going to be the name. So, and then on this one, I'm just going to print out the layer integer, just like I did over here. So we're going to get the enemy game object, we're going to print its name, we're going to print the layer integer value, and then we're going to print the layer name. So let's see if this works. So now if we go and hit play, we should see that we're also getting player, we're getting the ID, we're getting the actual name now because we're using the layer mask. And then we're also getting the enemy, we're getting the enemy ID, and also the layer name of that ID. So why would we use layers? So layers are used for a lot of things. You can use layers to basically do ray, ray tracing, like if you wanna do so why would we use layers? So layers are used if you wanted to use, let's say we wanted to filter out the enemies from this camera for some reason. So what we can do is we can go into the enemy. We can say, okay, this layer, it's going to be the enemy. And we can assign, we can also assign that to the enemy game object. So instead of saying enemy, we might say enemies or maybe a group of things that we want to associate with each other. So now if we want to basically no render that, we could say instead of instead of saying cooling, cooling mask everything, we can uncheck the the enemy layer. And you can see that the enemy layer is no longer rendering rendering. If I go back and select the cooling mask and say enemy, I can show it or I can hide it. So I could do the same thing with the player. If I wanted to create a player or maybe a different kind of layer that holds a group of a group of objects I can say player and I can associate that with this layer on the player game object now I can go back here now I can say okay I don't want to see the enemy or I don't want to see the player and you might have another camera that is rendering those maybe it's in a different angle so I can go ahead and toggle those back 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 on so now what happens if I hit play So now if I hit play, you can kind of see that now I no longer get the default layer name. Now I'm getting the enemy layer and I'm also getting the layer name of player on the player game object. So the other thing that you can use layers for is if you want to do ray cast and you wanted to ignore a ray cast, you know, from casting on some of these objects, you might want the ray cast to go through the enemy, but you might not want it to go through the, basically through the player. So I'm going to do ray cast in a future video and I'll show you how that works, but for now, I think I'm going to wrap it up right here. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And make sure that you check out GameDev.net. They are my sponsor. They have amazing resources for game developers, for beginners, for advanced game developers. And also make sure that you check out my Patreon page, which I barely started it as a way to fund this channel. And also make sure that I can find people that can help me out with the video editing and other things that I want to do on the channel. Thank you very much, guys.